Hello, and welcome to Board Game TV. Hope you're doing good. And today we're playing Pathfinder Skull and Shackles. We are on the third uh, scenario for Adventure 5. And we are playing Isle of the Black Tower. Great pirate leaders need more than ships and sailors. Secure your infamy and the loyalty of your followers with the bloody blade known as Iger's Kiss. The weapon said to have been crafted by Norberger, the god of greed. Okay, so when we get a blessing of Norberger, he's greed, huh? Was last seen upon the Isle of the Black Tower. Okay, we have a special thing here. We have <clears throat> the Shrouded Queen as our villain. And it has a special thing for the henchman. It says, when you build location deck, shuffle the villain, the Shrouded Queen, and the henchman beneath Breath of Dagon, Eye of Dagon, and Curse of the Flesh Eaters into the tower location deck. Shuffle one Witch Doctor henchman into each other location deck. So I've done that. And each character gets a card feet, and the loot, Agar's Kiss, and Quickened Ray. And as you can see, we only have four locations. We have the jungle, the sacred spring, the mangrove swamp, and the tower. Now, I... So we know where the villain is, so when usually when something like that happens, there's like a special condition uh, to beat the villain that you gotta do. So it probably wouldn't go well to just go to the tower, try to fight her, and then she'll move around and stuff like that. So <clears throat> I'm probably gonna go to the tower last. I think I think that's gonna be my thing. Let me put this blessing down because we got the jungle, the sacred spring, and mangrove swamp. And I guess we'll start at the jungle here. And it says at the difficulty of any check to quarry boom is increased by the adventure deck number of the current scenario, if any. And then when closing, succeed at a Wisdom or Survival check with a difficulty of 5 plus the Adventure deck number of the current scenario. <clears throat> if any. So it's going to be 10. On closing, if more than one location is not permanently closed, shuffle a random barrier into each open location. Oh boy, I don't know if I want to do that. So I probably want to go this one second to last, then, because I don't want to put barriers in a bunch of stuff. Okay, so we won't start the jungle. We're going to start Mangrove Swamp. That kind of looks a little easier. <clears throat> it says, during your exploration, if you defeat a bane that has the aquatic trait, you may explore again. Closing, succeed at a Constitution or Fortitude 6 check, and no effect when permanently closed. Okay, I think we'll start there. So we'll start with Valeros, <clears throat> and we get Reflecting Buckler, Constitution 4 to 2, 10. Uh, no, I can't get that, so we'll just put that there. And I will play a Blessing of Norberger, and we'll explore again. And we have, hmm, good, finally a weapon. Okay, Strength Melee 11, let's go for this. Come on. Six. Well, I was one short. Six and four is ten. Dang it. Okay. Well, well I tried. And I'm going to play a Blessing of Gorm. And we'll explore again. And we have... Oh, here's the Witch Doctor. Look at here. All right. Combat 18. <clears throat> Doesn't look too bad. Each time a character plays a spell, the difficulty to check to defeat is increased by two. Well, we won't be playing a spell. If defeated, you may banish a barrier with the curse trait displayed in front of a character at your location. I don't have that either. And you may immediately attempt to close the location this henchman came from. Okay, so let's... We're going to try to quickly beat this witch doctor. He's 18. I will probably use the invigorating curry, which will give me my strength. <clears throat> And 3d4, I get to recharge the card. And it is a plus one, so that's good. 
So let's see what I have here. I have 7 and 4, which is 11, plus another 4, which is 15, plus another 2, which is 17, plus 1 on the weapon, which is 18, and then, of course, my strength bonus, which is 4. So we do defeat the Witch Doctor. So I'll recharge that weapon. We have beaten the Witch Doctor. And we need to succeed at a Constitution or Fortitude 6 check to close the location. That should not be that difficult. Um, I do get a plus one bonus on that. And well, I see. I got a five. And my Constitution Fortitude is plus one, which makes it six. And that is exactly what we need. So the swamp, that was pretty quick. The swamp is perfectly closed. So we, oh, there was a sea serpent in that. So we've closed that location. Didn't get anything from it. <clears throat> That's fine. So let's play our next blessing and let's take a look at the sacred spring I think that's what we're head to next add 1d8 and the magic trait to any check to defeat a monster with the undead trait succeed at a wisdom or divine 9 check when closing and when permanently closed on closing you may banish a card to recharge 1d6 random cards from the blessings discard pile at the start of your turn you may recharge a card to recharge a card from your discard pile okay so We'll move here. It's going to be Alharaza, and we get a Blessing of Norberger. Okay. So I can bury any card to automatically get that, or use Divine 5. I don't, I have, well, we roll. I got a 6. Well, that's good enough. So I'm just going to go ahead and automatically play that, and we're going to explore again. And we have Raise Dead. Wisdom Divine 12. That actually looks like a decent spell. Ooh. Well, that was horrible. So, no, I'm not getting that. I'm going to play this ally here. And we're going to explore again. And we have Fortified Breastplate. There's no way I can get that, so I'm not even try. And I think I'll play a... Hmm... Blessing of Milani and keep exploring. Hi, right, here's our here's our next witch doctor. Okay. Now, alright, so we're obviously gonna play a spell. <clears throat> so it's gonna be increased by two, so it's gonna be twenty. Now Valeros is with me. And I'm gonna play Wall of Fire. So I get to use my Arcane Divine. It does it have an undead trait? It does not. So I only get 2d6 extra with that. Okay. Alright, 6 and 6 is 12. Plus 6 is 18. Plus 4 is 22. So automatically beat it. And now I need to do a Wisdom or Divine 9 check. Which shouldn't be too bad. And I rolled a 12. So I wish I would have rolled the 12 on the raised dead. But that location is closed. Man, this, this game is going quick here. Okay. So now the jungle, we don't have to worry about that barrier crap. So let's go ahead and play a blessing. And let's move to the jungle. And Lorraine will go. Let's see. Choir Boon is increased. Okay. Alright, and we have Ring of the Sea Strider. This is a boon, so it's actually going to be 15, not 10, because we had to add 5. And there's no way I can get that, so we'll just discard that. Uh, I will play this Ally Pterodon here, and we'll just explore again. And God, Okay, I promise you I shuffled these. Alright, so here's the Witch Doctor again. Oh boy. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, well, we're not going to play any spell, so it's just going to go back to the 18. So Valeros is there. I have my Sword Cane Pistol. Uh, so I use that. And then I get a 1d6, and I get to add my Stealth ability to it, plus 2 as well. Okay. 
So let's see what I have. I have four and four is eight. Eight and five is 13. Now I do get to add plus two for Valero's bonus. So that's 15. Then I get to add plus two for the sword cane pistol, which is 17. And then my dexterity bonus is four. Uh, so that's going to be 21. So we beat the witch doctor. So there goes that. Now to close it, we're going to have to add five. So it says succeed at a wisdom or survival check. Five. So we need a 10. Um, but my wisdom is a 12. But you know what? I think I'm going to do. So I'm going to play a blessing. And see if I can't. Yeah, okay, 11 and 4 is no problem. So we have closed this location. And it says, uh, on closing, if more than one location is not permanently closed, well, they are. So there goes the jungle. Okay. Ah, I hate these cards sometimes. So let's play our blessing deck. We know the villain is here at the tower. We know we have a whole bunch of henchmen at the tower. So let's see, it says, at the end of your turn, you may examine the top two cards of the Blessings deck and put them back in any order. Eh. When closing, succeed at Dexterity or Stealth 7 check. Well, that won't really be a problem. At the end of your turn, you may examine the top two cards of the Blessings deck and put them back in any order. Okay. So Valeros is going to go. Let's draw his cards. Let's see what he gets. And we get Phantom Fog. Wisdom Survival 15. If undefeated, move to a random open location and shuffle. Okay, well, we don't have a random open location. So it doesn't matter if I fail, which I was going to do anyways. So it's fine. Uh, I'm going to play a blessing. And we'll explore again. A blasting pistol. I can't get that. Unfortunately, only Lorraine could probably get it. So there goes that. So that's going to be the end of his turn. I don't have any more blessings I can play. Or allies. So it's going to be Al Haraz's turn. And I'm not choosing to do any of the end of turn stuff. So let's see what we get here. We get Eye of Dagon. Okay, Curse Trap Magic. All right. If undefeated, display this card next to your character card. While displayed, your strength, wisdom, and constitution dice are D4 each. Check to defeat. Dexterity, acrobatics, disable. Wow. There's. Oh boy. Okay, his strength. Okay, you know what? I think I may go ahead and take the penalty because he has divine, which is under his charisma. So, strength, he's already a D4. Wisdom, he's a D8. And Constitution, he's a D6. So I'm not going to spend anything to try and beat this. I'm not going to be able to beat it. So I'm going to put this next to my character card. And yeah, and that's that. So I'm going to play a Blessing. And we're going to continue to explore. And we have this guy right here. Dexterity range 9. Now, there's no way I can get this guy. So, there we go. And I think I'm going to play another blessing here. And we're going to keep going. And we have Curse of the Flesh Eaters. This does not look good. If undisplay, if undisplay this card next to your character card, while displayed at the start of each of your turns, bury the top card of your deck. Hmm. Disable, Wisdom, Divine. Okay, now there is a possibility... I can beat this. <clears throat> so, um, my divine is a D12. I need a 16. So, how, however, I know I have this ability's eye. Um, and the top card of the blessings deck is <clears throat> the blessings discard pile is a blessing of the gods. So I'm going to play this, which is going to let me because I am on a ship. Uh, and the top card of blessings discard pile is a blessing of the gods. I'm going to get a 1d8 plus 2. 
so I can add that to this check. And it's a recharge, so I can just recharge it. So I'm gonna play that and a 1d8 plus two and hope I can get 16 or better. Okay, seven <clears throat> and seven is 14 plus two is 16, so we did beat it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, that's gonna be, however, the end of Al Haraz's turn. So let's put Lorraine's here. Let's draw a couple cards for him. <clears throat> and we have Wizard's Hook. Arcane, Melee, Divine. Well, there's no way I'm getting that. So that would kind of would act. Man, I just missed that, man. That would kind of probably would have been good for him. However, I will play Rosie Cuswell here. And we're going to explore again. And I have this thing right here. Okay, before you act, each character place you must succeed at a dexterity or acrobatics check or be dealt 1d6 electricity damage. Okay, there's no way um, Valeros <laughs> can do that. So he's going to have to just take damage. Four damage. Oof. So let me get rid of this. Let me get rid of this. The rapier and the cutlass so wow he took some damage okay there's no way <laughs> he's gonna be able to beat it so I'm gonna have to take damage for that I take three and there's all my cards there all right however um, I can try to beat it and what I want to do is I want to play this blessing here and that gives me two more dice because I am on a ship. So all I need is three eight-sided dice. I don't want to lose any health. This stupid thing. And that is seven, eight, twelve. Plus four is sixteen. So I beat the check. So he doesn't have to take any damage. Now I have to fight the thing. Now Valeros is with me. And I will use my sword cane pistol. Okay, so that's 6, 12, 15, plus 2 for the sword cane, which is 17, plus 2 for Valeros, which will be 19. So we beat it. No problem. <laughs> <coughs> Okay, and you know what? I'm going to play this guy right here, and we're going to explore some more. Wall of Blades. Well, there's no way... Uh, I'm going to be able to get that, so there goes that. And then I'm going to play Fish Guts here, and we're going to explore again. Oh, my God. Well, you know, at least... <laughs> okay, so you know at least he's going to lose one card. He's not going to lose any because he's already hurt. And um, I'm going to have to be able to try to... I can't beat that dexterity check. So I'm going to have to lose one card. Okay. I reveal this card to reduce at, to, by two. So I'm actually fine. So now I can fight the thing again. Jeez. That's pretty horrible, man. That thing right there. Six and four is ten. Plus two is twelve. Plus two extra for Valeros is fourteen. Plus two for the sword cane pistol is sixteen. And then plus four for my dexterity is twenty. So we beat this thing again. But that is the end of the turn. Hmm. Okay, so let's put down a blessing. It's Valeros' turn. You gotta draw six new cards here. I hate that monster. I hope we don't ever see that thing again. Okay. So we have three cards left. We know one's the villain. We know one's another henchman. And how many I think one's gotta be a barrier. Yep. Sabotage. Okay. Dexterity, Disable, Wisdom, Perception. Okay, if undefeated, each character location is dealt 2 fire damage, and your ship is dealt 1d4 plus 2 structural damage. Leave this barrier face up on the location deck. Characters' location encounter this barrier as their first exploration is turned. 
Okay, so I really got to try to beat this. Um, let's see. I'm going to use my dexterity, which will give me a six. However, I'm going to use this right here. This card, this card, to add two dice to any check to defeat a barrier. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to get three sixes. Uh, where's the other six sider at? Oh, there it is. Okay, so uh, 10, 15, we beat it. Okay. Now I'm going to play uh, Griffer Tibbs here. And we're going to explore some more. And we have this buckler, and there's no way I can get that. So we'll just go ahead and get rid of it. And that's going to be the end of his turn. So we have two cards left, I think. So I think one's going to be the henchman, and one's going to be the villain. So let's put that there. All Haraza will go. And let's see what it is. And it is uh, this guy right here, the Breath of Dagon. If undefeated, display this card next to your character card. While displayed, your dexterity, intelligence, and charisma. Okay, that's the prop. <coughs> Excuse me. Disable constitution uh, fortitude. That's going to be a problem. So, <coughs> and unfortunately, even with the blessing, I can't beat that. So it's just going to have to sit there. And we're going to have to... That's going to have to be the end of his turn. So he's stuck with these two things. So it's going to be Lorraine's turn. And I know the villain is here. And I, and we got to hope that the villain doesn't have all these prerequisite stuff. Or we're going to be in some serious trouble here. So let's have a look at the villain. The Shrouded Queen. The Shrouded Queen is immune to cold, mental, and poison. If your check to defeat has the acid, fire, or electricity trait, the difficult its difficulty is increased by five. Hmm. Before you act, each character in your location must succeed at a Constitution or Fortitude 12 check, or recharge 1d4 cards. Okay, let's start with that. All right. Um, Valeros, Constitution Fortitude 12. He can't make that. He doesn't have anything to help him with, so he has to recharge some cards. So he'll recharge all four of his cards. That's not very good, but at least they're just getting recharged. Al Haraza here, ain't no way he's gonna make that. So he gotta recharge four cards as well. Hmm. I'll recharge these four. Okay. All right, now Constitution 4212, and there's no way um, Lorraine's going to be able to make that. So we're going to have to recharge with him. Three cards. Okay, see which... Um, I'll get rid of this, this, and... this the scoundrel sword so I'll get rid I'll recharge those three cards okay so we've done that then if the shrouded queen is not the only card in the location deck well it is the only card in the location deck she is evaded summon and encounter the henchman abyssal scavenger instead okay well she is not so we just got to try to beat her all right so she has a combat 18 then 18 so we got to beat her twice which is fine um Okay, Valeros is with me. <clears throat> um, I'm going to play a blessing right here. And let's add another eight sided dice. And then, of course, a six sider. Okay, so five and three is eight, ten. 13 plus 2 is 15 plus 2 is 17 plus 4 is 21 so we beat it okay now uh, we're going to have to beat it again however this time I'm going to use the vindictive harpoon and so I get the 1 6 and then I'll bury the harpoon and add two more d6 
so that's uh, 11, huh, 12, 13, 16, plus 2, plus uh, is 18, plus another 2 is 20. So we beat it. Okay, so we beat the Shrouded Queen. That wasn't too bad. So let's have a look and see what our loot is, what these loot, loot things do. I know we get a card feed as well, but I want to see what our loot is. It's um, Quickened Ray and Agar's Kiss. Now, Quickened Ray is a spell. This card, this card, add 2d6 to, and the cold or electricity trait to your combat check. You may play this card even if you have played another spell on this check. After you play this card, if you do not have the Arcane or Divine skill, banish it. Well, we would. Okay. Agir's Kiss. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your strength or melee. Plus 1d6 plus 2. You may additionally discard this card to add another 1d6. Add another 1d6 plus 2 if the Bane has the Outsider trait. Add 2 if a Blessing is played on this check. Or five, it is a blessing of Norberger. Wow, okay. All right. Well, those might be something to look at. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. It was a little quick, but this one really wasn't that, that bad. Um, I hope to see you next time. Until then, have fun.